Hey guys, this is James, and this is going to be a assessment or a review of the BL Touch 3.1 version with the uh, firmware for the CR Tennis Pro. And if you want to see a step-by-step -step, uh, tutorial on how to install the BL Touch uh, to your CR Tennis Pro, uh, you're going to have to go check out that video up here, <clears throat> just because it's so long and. Um, I kind of didn't want to divert time away from the actual instructions. So what do I think about the BL Touch? Um, it's a little expensive, I would say, uh, for a small device like that. It is a little expensive. I mean, it's an itty bitty thing, but sometimes, you know, when it's when things are miniaturized, it may be more expensive than the bigger versions or the larger versions, just because of the logistics of getting it into a smaller size. I guess it would save you a little bit of headache as if you were to constantly uh, adjust the uh, capacitive or inductive sensor with a screw. But I would say the overall the upgrade is probably worth it. I think it's going to be probably more reliable and more consistent than the actual stock sensor. Um, the stock sensor really you should be replacing it I would say unless you are lucky and have one that is uh, really really dialed in. This is a new BL Touch that I got just today arrived and I had to return the other one because um, it wasn't working properly. Um, so this is the new BL Touch. They have a little sticker or seal as you can see. This is what the standard BL Touch kit comes with. The extension cord is extra. So I returned the old BL Touch, and then um, because it was a defective BL Touch, now I'm gonna pull out this pin, and I'm not gonna force it, I'm just gonna pull it out really lightly. So the pin really pulls out with any kind of a resistance, and as you can see, I'm putting no, almost like no pressure on the actual pin itself. So it is drawn in by the magnetic effect and um, that magnetic effect is really, really uh, not that strong. It's very light force. And that is why if it's not done correctly into the correct tolerances, it will not go back in. The pin will not go back into the housing. Yeah, I pull, I pull the pin out. And then if I just turn it, that's actually just the force of gravity uh, pulling it back into the housing. So that's one thing that you might want to test before you actually install the BL Touch. If it goes back in, the pin goes back in when you tilt it back up. Um, that means it is a very good uh, BL Touch. So if there's any type of real friction between the housing and the needle, the needle will not be drawn back up into the housing, uh, even when it's powered on. That magnetic effect is really, really small and tiny. So this is something that you might want to consider doing a test before you install the BL Touch to your printer. That way you don't have to do the work twice uh, by disassembling and reassembling the BL Touch to your printer. Now is the BL Touch effective? Uh, yeah, it is. Well, I guess it really depends on if you get a defective uh, BL Touch or a capacitive sensor or whatnot, but, but the BL Touch is supposed to be a lot more accurate than the capacitive sensor. So as far as the old capacitive sensor, you see how it has to be dialed in over here by the screw? I did have a little bit of problem. I think it's because it may just be that this screw is uh, loose and it doesn't meet the quite the strict tolerances that you need to have it um, so it doesn't move at any level. So it's set at that level and then it doesn't have any movement uh, from the up and down plus and minus. Whether it's the BL touch or the capacitive sensor or the inductive sensor, um, that that is just a secondary measure. Um, you have to know how to set your uh, printer mechanically. Just make everything within tolerances as much as possible to the specs as possible. And then you can use the auto leveling feature to complement the actual uh, mechanical set. So I can't stress enough how much more important that you need to know how to diagnose your printer mechanically first and then use the uh, auto leveling features as a secondary measure. Bed has to be uh, in line with the actual head itself. So it's actually called tramming, I believe. As far as the firmware is concerned, 
it looks much nicer i mean the black interface is much nicer the images look much nicer as opposed to that old hideous uh, the blue lcd the plain blue lcd screen uh, it works and it's compatible with octoprint so there should be no issues i still think there is a little bit of bug uh, when leveling the bed, it should be able to go diagonally or in a cross pattern rather than going uh, in a square. Uh, the numbers uh, seems to be flickering a little bit, uh, depending on wh where you look. As far as it is right now, everything pretty much works. These are some uh, minor bugs or fixes that I see. When you stop the print, the bed actually goes backwards instead of forwards. Uh, maybe it's just me, but I think it's supposed to actually come forward. It's a little uh, confusing, I think, um, when I think about it. Uh, when I push the front arrow, uh, to me, it seems like it's supposed to come toward me. And then when I push the back arrow, it's supposed to go away from me. But these are like minor things. Um, everything works on the firmware. Uh, the BL Touch works on the firmware, so... Uh, so there shouldn't be too much of an issue as far as printing goes. So if you've enjoyed this video, please leave a like. And if you have any questions, leave a comment below and subscribe to my channel. And then uh, I'll see you next time. Thanks.